Hey everybody, I just wanted to shoot a quick update here on my crayfish tank. Um, yesterday I put some minnows in there and you can still see that one is up there near the top. Oh, I got two of them that are still up near the top and two are down here in this cave now. Uh, these two that are near the top are not near the top for the reasons I'm about to discuss. Yesterday when I first put them in there I noticed fairly uh, soon after I put them in there they were near the top and they had rapid gill movements which indicated to me that they were not getting enough oxygen uh, you know they're coming from a fast moving stream I can only assume that these fish are used to higher levels of dissolved oxygen than this tank with fairly uh, you know it's, it's certainly not stagnant water but it's not rapidly moving and it cannot be called highly oxygenated by anybody's definition uh, for one thing, the water is probably about 10 degrees warmer than the water they came from and therefore not able to hold as much oxygen even if it was flowing at the same rate. Uh, it still wouldn't have the same amount of oxygen in it. So I really, really put them in water that was much, much less oxygenated than what they're used to. So I waited overnight. Uh, I waited till this morning to see if they acclimated at all and they had not when I came down they were doing the same thing they were right up near the surface they were gasping for breath I'll say uh, and by gasping for breath I simply mean that there was rapid gill movement they were passing a lot of water over their gills in an attempt to extract as much oxygen as they could uh, it's the fish equivalent of gasping for breath so I made a little change this morning. I wanted to test an experiment and I wanted to check my own understanding of dissolved gases and gas exchange and all that. So I made one very, very minor change and it made a difference. It didn't make a huge difference, but it made enough of a difference. And what I did was I reduced the water level by about an inch. If you see where the water is flowing out of that opening, Yesterday I had it so that the water was level with that opening and it was more or less just flowing straight out and moving across the surface. So that was giving me some water movement, but it wasn't giving me any depth of water movement. It was simply moving the surface water around. It also prevented me from having uh, as much surface area as possible by creating this little bit of a waterfall effect. All of that water you can see right there that's exposed to the atmospheric air is exchanging gases so it's got more surface area and it's got more time to exchange gases what happens then is because it's now flowing downwards it is plunging into the water and if you actually put some flake food or something in there and watch the flow of the water it's actually flowing all the way down to the bottom and across here and down so it is picking up more oxygen and releasing more co2 and it is then plunging deeper into the tank so not only is it carrying that oxygen down into the water a little deeper it's forcing some of the water that's lower down in the tank and has less oxygen in it up towards the surface where gas exchange also happens it's not only happening where the water is moving it is also happening where the surface meets the oxygen or you know the atmospheric gases so by carrying the water down into the tank and having the deeper water brought up to the surface just those two little bit of uh, you know that little tiny bit of a difference just lowering the water level a little bit uh, gave me more surface area of moving water to pick up gases or exchange gases rather and it gave me that little bit of depth of circulation so I'm now circulating the water down and up rather than just around and across the surface and that little bit of difference made the difference because you can see now I've got two uh, dace that are now in that cave hiding and the two that are up near the surface aren't gasping for breath anymore and they're not up near the surface like they're trying to get air they're up near the surface like they're trying to stay out of the way of the uh, crayfish. The one has very damaged fins and then the other one has some damage on its head so I don't know if they you know got nipped by the crayfish. Well the one with the damaged tail certainly did but the one with the damage on the head could be from trying to get away from a crayfish. He simply darted into a rock or something uh, but again they are starting to suffer some damage so them being up near the surface may have as much to do with staying away from predators as it does uh, anything else so I really think that that little tiny adjustment I made was all that was needed in order to get just enough oxygen in there again these fish don't have a long life expectancy in here they're not really honestly much more than feeders now that doesn't mean I want them to suffer while they're in here 
Um, so I did make an adjustment, but I also want to learn when I do this kind of stuff. If I had not seen any difference, I would have made further adjustments. But I really think that what I did has actually made enough of an adjustment that I was able to bring the fish down off of the surface and get enough oxygen into the water that they're not going to uh, suffer in that way. They may suffer at the hands of the crayfish, but they are not going to simply asphyxiate because there's not enough oxygen in the water for them anymore. So I certainly learned a little bit about that by doing that. It was an interesting experiment to see if it worked, and it did, so I'm a little bit pleased with that. So any thoughts or suggestions for anything else I can try with this tank, feel free to let me know. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already because you never know when you're going to get what you're going to get or anything else with me. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of it. So thanks for watching this one, and I will see you real soon on the next one.